So Skrillex is back releasing new music and everyone is always talking about how he gets his mixes and masters so clean but so fat and loud and punchy at the same time. Let's talk about how you can do the same thing. loud master usually peaks around like minus eight RMS, but this one is insanely loud. It's peaking at around minus five and a half RMS without distorting, which is crazy. By the way, all the synth sounds I used in this video are from my brand new Serum preset pack, which you can check out at bigzsounds.com. These are the only sounds I'm gonna need to use for a while. Anyway, I know this track isn't the same style of music that Skrillex makes, but I wanted to show you how a style of mixing can translate to any genre of music. So let's go through four ways you can get those really loud and punchy mixes. The last tip is about mastering, so I left that for the end. So the first one you might be surprised to see has nothing to do with mixing at all. Everyone talks about how you should make music in different stages, like put on your songwriting hat and write the song, then put on your producer hat, produce the song, then put on your mixing hat, and so on. But if you want a really good mix, you actually should be thinking about the mix throughout every stage of that process. One of the things you'll notice in a lot of Skrillex tracks are call and response melodies. So here's an example of one. We'll use two different sounds for the call and response part, which makes the track sound more complex than it actually is. But more importantly, listen to all the room between these two sounds. That's a songwriting choice that's gonna help the mix stay open and give it more space to breathe. So once you write the track, you get into producing it, adding new layers and sounds and drums. So while you're doing this, the most important thing is that everything you add has a purpose. For example, if you saw how many drum layers are down here, you might think the mix would be too crowded. But that's not true because all of these percussion layers down here Their only job is to support the shaker loop. So that shaker has a 16th note rhythm and all these percussion sounds underneath it also have a 16th note rhythm just to support that. So in the context of the mix, I'm actually thinking about all those different layers as one sound because they're all there for a purpose. So when you're adding new layers while producing, just ask yourself, what is this layer supporting? And if it's not supporting anything, then you might just want to take it out of the production altogether. If you just do those two things, leave some space in the songwriting and make sure every layer has a purpose, you'll set yourself up to be able to have a really good mix. The second key to getting a big mix is if a sound doesn't need any reverb, then don't add any. Check out these sounds. When you solo them, it might be tempting to add reverb because they sound so dry. But since we have these lead synth sounds with huge reverbs on them above it, that reverb is filling up so much space. We don't really need any more. So the trick here is not to add reverb while you're listening to a sound by itself. Instead, play the full track while you're adding reverb. That makes it a lot easier to decide if you actually need that reverb or not. You'll notice in Skrillex's tracks, he only uses reverb when necessary. And a lot of times when he does add reverb, it's a really short room reverb that's not taking up too much space in the mix. The next key to a fat mix is having really short, punchy drums. The way to check this is with an oscilloscope. Look at all this separation in between the drums. Each drum is clearly defined. Like you see the kick here, hi-hat here, a little shaker here, clap here, and there's space in between all these elements, which is gonna allow more room for the synths and the bass to come through. Skrillex likes to use super short kicks. Like you can see, this kick is barely longer than a 16th note. If your kick is too long, you could just put a volume shaper plugin on your kick track to shorten it. And the claps and hats he uses have a nice initial attack to them, but they're also usually pretty short. 
and of course they have no reverb on them at all. They're totally dry. I think you'll be surprised by how big of a difference having short punchy drums can make on a mix. And that doesn't mean there's not room to throw in some big drum hits with lots of reverb sometimes too. The last thing I'm gonna talk about here is mastering in groups. It's an interesting way to squeeze some extra loudness out of your master if you want it. This track is pretty simple, so I've broken the main groups into drums, bass, and synths. Now out of those groups, I'm gonna take the loudest one, which in this case is the drums, and I'm gonna add a limiter to that bus. But I'm actually gonna be using this as more of a clipper than a limiter. So in this advanced tab down here, I'm gonna change the style to aggressive, put the look ahead all the way down, the attack all the way up, release all the way down, and turn all the channel linking off. And you wanna turn oversampling, in this case, as high as your computer can handle. I'm gonna turn it to 16 times. And now super important is I'm gonna go in here and turn this one-to-one -one unity gain feature on. This makes it so as I turn up this gain on the limiter, you'll hear that the output volume is gonna stay the same. So you can't hear a volume change there at all. So I'm gonna keep turning this up until I hear distortion. but I don't actually want any distortion, so now I'm gonna back off it a little bit. And you can see in here what this is doing. It's taking the loudest peaks and it's catching them and turning them down immediately. So I can show you the benefit of what this is actually doing by bringing in a volume meter after the drums. Now watch the peak level right here when I have the limiter turned off. So that's peaking around like minus eight decibels. But when I turn the limiter on, it sounds like it's the same volume. But see, that's peaking around minus 10 decibels. So I'm gonna take these limiter settings, I'm gonna copy them, and I'm gonna paste them onto the other groups. So I'm gonna open up another limiter on the bass group and copy the settings. And you can see it's now catching those individual peaks that are too loud in the bass track. And I'll go ahead and take that same setting and copy it over to the synth track now. Let's use this level meter on the master bus now to check out what it's doing. So I'm gonna go through and turn each of these limiters off and now let's check the levels. You can see right here, it's peaking around minus 1.6 decibels on the right side there. We'll watch once I turn all these limiters back on, it'll sound like it's the same volume. But it's only peaking around minus 4.3 decibels now. That's what's gonna allow us to squeeze some extra volume out of the master. So then I just go through my normal mastering chain, which is EQ, a little bit of mastering compression, some soothe to tame the high end, then a limiter with more normal mastering settings down here. But now I'm gonna be able to really push this limiter. So I mean, that's super loud and it's not distorting at all. I will say this technique only really works when you do the other things that I talked about too. I'm more of a fan of leaving a little bit more dynamics in the track and not making it this loud, but it's there as a tool if you wanna be able to do it. But the songwriting, production, and the mix really need to all work together in order to make a loud, punchy mix. It's not just about mastering at all. And like I said, my new Serum preset pack is finally out. All the sounds in this video are from the pack. I've spent months working on this thing and making sure all the sounds are mixed perfectly to just use right away in a song. And all of the sounds use the four macro controls in Serum, so you can easily tweak things, even if you don't know that much about sound design. So if you're interested, go check it out at BigZSounds.com. You can get creative with it and use it with any genre. I'm looking forward to hearing the stuff you guys come up with with the pack. Thank you for watching. Peace.